the Michigan Wolverines. And Jim Harbaugh and his bunch had obviously their most successful season last year. I mean, just a massive, massive job by them. And, of course, there are big changes. New defensive coordinator, new offensive coordinator, etc. Let's go ahead and pull up the spreadsheet, my preview spreadsheet on the screen here. If you're watching on the show, if you're listening on podcast, you can just hear me talk about it. They went 12-2 and two last year. And the postgame win expectancy said as much. Uh, 11.65 and 1.35. I only do postgame win expectancy for the regular season games and the conference championship games. So... You look at what they did there, and just monster year. They were 11-3 and three against the spread. Uh, their projected SP Plus record for this year, 9.5 wins. 9.5 and, and 2.5, and so anywhere between 9-3 and three or 10-2. and two. It seems plausible for sure. And so it, this is a, a good team, not as talented as last year. It wouldn't, it wouldn't seem when you look at it. They lose Hutchinson. They lose Ojabo. They lose uh, Dax Hill. They lose Hassan Haskins. I mean, it's just big-name guys that were really, really good. First-round talent on that defense. We will start off, uh, let's talk about the offense first. All right, PPA per drive last year, number 34, number 25 in rushing success rate, number 55 in passing success rate. Uh, the team was, was efficient. They were not a dominant offensive football team, but they could, they could take advantage of teams that were weak, at the line of scrimmage, for sure. The new co-offensive coordinators here, Matt Weiss, quarterback's coach, and Sharon Moore, uh, the offensive line coach. Uh, I'll tell you this, the offensive line looks like it's going to be pretty strong again. You know, I mentioned Haskins is gone, but you do have uh, Corum back. Edwards and uh, the wide receiver, Ronnie Bell, are back from injury. The uh, The quarterback room is stacked with McNamara and McCarthy. I, I tend to lean that McCarthy is going to take this job at some point this year. Just a guess, but at the same time, that schedule sets up brilliantly for Cade McNamara to just come out and continue on with the job. The offense was number 16 in uh, scoring opportunities, but number 42 in points per scoring opportunity, so they did not take advantage of getting down into the opponent's 40-yard line nearly enough. It probably needed to get a little bit better than that. They were really efficient, ran the ball 59.2% of the time. If they've got Bell back this year, it kind of makes me wonder if they're going to swap that a little bit, get it a little bit closer to maybe 50-50, somewhere around there. You you know when you were going up against a team like Ohio State, against Penn State, etc., you're going to have to be explosive at some point. So maybe with, with Weiss being the play caller, you could expect them to maybe try and open things up just a little bit more. Uh, we'll move over to the defense. New D.C., Jesse Minter, uh, he was the defensive coordinator at Vandy, but he was with the Ravens from 2017 through 2020. You're not, there's no terminology that's going to be different here. You're not really changing schemes from what you had last year. Uh, you lost Mike McDonald. Minter's the same guy. I mean, it's the same thing. They already know exactly what they're doing here. They lost three first-round defenders, only got 46% returning production, and yet, when you look at the roster, like I still think they're going to be fine. Like I think this team is is really talented. You got 15 players with 175 plus snaps back. Defensive line looks pretty strong. Like it's not going to be what it was last year, but it's still going to be pretty good. And you're definitely going to be more talented than the majority of the teams on the schedule. Along with that, uh, linebacker and secondary look okay. Uh, not much upper echelon talent, but you've got a a whole slew of good players. So I I do like that. Uh, Michigan looks like they're going to be favored in 11 games this year. you got four games that are toss-ups. Toss-ups, to me, are eight points one way or the other, right? Anything that is a one-possession game, I look at as a toss-up, which means that they've got seven games where they are eight games where they are either favored by more than eight points or they're an underdog by more than eight. Now, I believe they're going to be more than an eight-point underdog at Ohio State regardless of how they do the rest of the year. Uh, the over-under here is 9.5. Uh, it's juiced to the over at minus 135. Their odds to win the conference are plus 550. Now, that's to win the whole conference. There are no odds on the division right now, and I wonder if that's because it, there's so much money right now on Ohio State that they decided to take it off the board. We'll see. Uh, let's talk about some keys to the season here. Expectations are high. I would imagine that there's going to be enough talent here, even with the schedule, uh, for Michigan to be able to win You know, a lot of games again. 
they they typically do this under Harbaugh. I know the 2020 year still leaves a bad taste in a lot of people's mouth, but they tend to beat the teams that they're supposed to beat. And this year, you've got a lot of teams that you're supposed to beat. The offense avoided third downs on 48.9% of its sets of downs. Can they continue the early down success this year? Again, schedule dictates. Kind of looks like it. Team was fast. They were violent last year on defense. How much do the coordinator changes and the loss of the NFL guys change what they do this year? And that's that's my question going into it. I look at this schedule. I've got a loss to Penn State. I could see them easily winning that one. I've got a loss to Ohio State. I don't think anybody's beating Ohio State this year, at least not in the regular season. I, I've got them 10 and 2. You know, could they drop one to Michigan State or Nebraska or at Iowa or something crazy? It, sure, I guess. I just don't see it happening a lot. So I'm, I'm going with 10 and 2. I think that they are still going to be in a position at the end of the year when they play Ohio State to go back to the Big Ten championship game. They're not going to be as talented as Ohio State. But they weren't last year, and they still whipped them. So you never know. You never know with these things. So I, I like Michigan quite a bit here. I think that this team is going to be really good again, just maybe not as good as they were last season. So I, I do expect big things for Harbaugh and that bunch. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.